hey guys, for how I would put my um, application that I would use and what I would put where. I would basically separate out it out into these uh, CloudFront S3 Elastic. Um, if you're not too familiar with Elastic Beanstalk under the hood, too, so it just makes it Elastic Beanstalk Roku. It's a quick start, helps you get set up really fast. Um, so I would use that, which uses EC2. So that's why these that are EC2 here. So here's how this would work. So I'm splitting up. So this is my Express server is going to sit on Elastic B. Um, and then I'd have my PostgreSQL database on RDS, and I would have React on an S3 and CloudFront. Now CloudFront, what this guy does, and here is the flow of it. So it's going to go from CloudFront. CloudFront is basically sits on S3. So this is its own thing. This has a URL to it. To it. Um, and actually, all three of these, each of these has a separate URL. This has a uh, you know URL to access the database, URL to access the website. So CloudFront of S3, and basically, I believe it helps with um, performance when you have a lot of users um, using. Um, I actually haven't used CloudFront before, but I have heard for you know when you have a lot of users spreading S3 uh, efficiently and handling requests efficiently. Um, so, but I have used these three before. I'm going to be setting up CloudFront soon with this, but I, that's something I do want to try good to have in front. But again, this is literally just for routing, nothing to do with, you could run it without CloudFront. Um, and then S3, um, S3 you can have sites on. So React, uh, if you're using Create React app, which I like to use, you can actually, that is, uh, you can create the script HTML CSS files from that. Um, and three, um, which really is really nice. It loads really fast, I really like that. Um, and so really well. Uh, you can also put any type of website on S3, it's just static HTML, which React lets you, you know, nice, that we're able to put this on S3. So this is running on its own S3, these two pieces, right? If we have just a static React application that's talked to a database, we could just run on S3, and this could be our uh, This is all you need for React. Uh, but the part here, Elastic Beanstalk, EC2, EC2 is basically a server, really it's a computer that you can run anything on, right? Um, and I'm going to be running, I exp spelled express wrong here, um, are there, okay. So express is going to be running on this, all the requests from uh, S3, and one thing you can actually say on your Elastic Beanstalk, only take requests from your S3 from that can make it very secure, which is nice. And then part is uh, where you can put relational, I believe it's relational data. Stuff. This is where you can store database stuff. Um, so this is the uh, PostgreSQL we'll be running on. So Elastic Beanstalk. And again, uh, Express is where GraphQL is. So for Elastic Beanstalk, it'll be running Express and Express uh, on that. So both of these. So that's how I would set up OS if I were to like you know switch this over. So the individual important parts. RDS, which is its own, Express, which is its own thing, and S3, which is its own thing, like individually. I could set up RDS and just query it, or I could set up just Express, and you know, I could go to that. Uh, I just want three separate entities, um, and then we're basically, they're talking, connecting all together, um, which is kind of neat. So yeah, that's how I set it up with uh, Amazon. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.